I can ask you, what, what did your dad say when you said, I'm, I'm quitting footy? What are you talking about? Well, you're making making big money, mate. But, and he, this is what he said. He said, boxing's dead in this country. Boxing, oh, really? He boxing's said dead, like, boxing's yeah. dead. There's no one, boxing's dead. I said, you like know what? I told I, your brother, it's a long shot. My reply to him was, don't worry. I'm going to give boxing mouth to mouth. Yeah. Because I knew yeah, what sort of personality I was. Mm -hmm. I knew what sort of... Um, Mouthpiece I was, and entertainer I was. Hey boys, before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, I'm being legit here. I've been using the Lawnmower 4.0 since I first talked about it. I use it all the time, it's gone, trust me. It doesn't cut you, it doesn't graze you. I don't know how they've done it. It's got a little light on it, it's wireless, it can go in the water, it's a gun razor, trust me. But hey, it comes in packs. They got these little packages, listen, right? Ball toner, ball deodorant. You might have a giggle, but trust me, you, you, your balls need to be toned and they need to be deodorized, right? It's legit, it's a given, it's a no-brainer. Anyway, I've got a deal for you. You use code the search, 20% off, listen to this, 20% off and free shipping. Use the code the search, let's see it, tell them I sent ya. Lawnmower 4.0, best ball clipper there is. You can use it any way you want, anyway, let's oge. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Search. Huge guest today, proud Bunjalung man, was once the highest paid player in the NRL. After a successful career in rugby league, he traded in his footy boots for boxing gloves and went on to win multiple titles and generate more paper view, make more pay-per-view views than any other Aussie boxer. He's done a lot more than just sport and he's been described as the most polarizing athlete in Australian sports history. It's my pleasure to welcome Long requested, long awaited, you all want, Anthony Mundine. How are you, brother? Hey, bro, so nice. bro, ever since I started the podcast, yeah. I don't know if you've seen in the comments, yeah. every third comment, your name. <laughs> it was a natural. Yeah, no, How you been, been brother? I've no, been good, bro. Just cruising, man. Just taking it easy, living the retired life, you know. Yeah. Just uh, staying a bit fit, staying sort of active a little bit. Got a couple of businesses going, man. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I was actually already near pumping some up. You're going good, brother. Well, yeah, you're all right, bro. Yeah. How are you staying fit? I just, I run, so I try to run every second day. Oh, maybe yeah. Maybe five, six, seven K, five to seven Ks. And then every every other day, after I run, I'll box. So I'll box yeah, this hectic. morning. Then stay fit. One day run and one day boxing. Yeah. So it's like lower body, upper body. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. mad. Yeah. yeah, hectic. Bro, look, tell everyone, bro, like, where'd you grow up? Before yeah. we all knew who you were. Well, everyone sort of relates me to Redfern, Waterloo area, but mm -hmm. I grew up as far as I, I didn't live there, but I, yep. you know, knocked around there my whole sort of team yep, yep. from from thirteen to up. All my all my mob were in there, cousins, family, and whatnot. And um, yeah, Montaigne's plenty down there. Yeah, big, and, yeah. And Wesley P, my little cousin Wesley P, yep. we used to roll with him a lot. But um, I grew up in Canterbury. Mm -hmm. um, Canterbury South, just beyond the high school. I mean, sorry, the the public school there. Yo, yo. In the, in the apartments, and um, my dad um had a two a two or three bedroom apartment just beyond there. We lived there till I was about twelve, thirteen, and then my na my dad had a house for for his mother, and just not too far in, but it was in El Elwood. And um, I moved there when I was 13 because she passed away and we sort of ventured in, in that house. Yeah. Yeah, I was spinning out before we turned the podcast on. I wish we got it. Because he <laughs> was talking because we both went to Glebe High, right? Yeah, yeah. He went 92 and I went not long in 99. And I knew that he was a mad basketball player. That not many, we'll get into that. And then he's saying like, oh, and I went to Canterbury Boys. Yeah. I went, fuck off, bro. I went to Canterbury Boys, bro. And he looked at me like, man, like that, you know? And he goes, like, oh, because I grew up in Canterbury. I said, oh, I fucking grew up in Canterbury, bro. Yeah. We both grew up in the same area, same school, and both ended up here, yeah. going to the same school. Yeah, yeah. bro. You got uh, into footy first? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I played footy since I was four years old. Mm -hmm. No, I had a passion for footy. I love footy. Obviously, every sort of backfella, you know, growing up. Who are you playing for? Wanted to be a star. I played. Marvel. No, I played, first game was Zetland. Oh, you played for Zetland first yeah, game? Yeah, first Zetland. Zetland. I think back then it was called Magpies, but yep. they called the Jets. Yep, yep. So Zetland, Zetland Magpies, I was playing for them. Um, Woodlow Oval was my first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah hectic. <laughs> yeah. And what, you always, 
always gone at footy? Yeah, I, well, I, <clears throat> I started to, you know, obviously play since I was forward, but was really just having fun at that, that stage. But by the time I was 13, 14, you start to show your skill, show, show what you got, your speed, yeah. you know, your vision and things like that. And yeah, when um, you're younger, it's yeah. like... So no one's doing no, anything. No one's doing nothing. You, all you can tell is who's the faster kid, yeah. who, who's got the good hands, and you can sort of tell <laughs> they'll be good, yeah. but no one's actually doing yeah, the yeah, proper exactly, sport. You exactly, know? But exactly. you're right. When you're about 11, 12... So you start to see the skill. The skill, out, yeah. The skill yeah. Coming, your vision and things that, you know, um, instinctive sort of play. Yeah. So in the juniors, I, I made every rep team. Mm. Like Australian schoolboys. No way. Australian junior kangaroos and all the state teams. Um, Bruh, so top, top rep top, teams. Top, top. Not like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah, just so playing I was, like I was made a, of the South. I was a gun. And my only, my only goal was to play, make my, make, play for my country in, in the seniors. You yeah. Know yeah. What I mean? That was my goal in footy. And yeah, I yeah. knew I was going to get a boxing. From a young age, I knew I was going to get a boxing. Oh, did you? I just didn't you always know, knew. I just didn't know when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'd see my dad, you know, the, the respect he got, the, um, attention he sort of got and um i wanted to be like my dad you know yeah i, I wanted to try and get the world to that title he never he was yeah uh, yeah never got when he fought carlos monzon so i wanted to try and get that and um that was my that was oh, in my big, that was bro. in my mind from a y very young age like maybe nine ten years old yeah 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 because your dad was mad boxer yeah, he's bro. a beast bro. He's a so, beast. The, so that was like that's what you always aspired to yeah and so what because like so you're boxing when you're young, playing footy when you're young. I, I, I was I wasn't boxing. Oh no way! No boxing. So you just playing with footy, and because you were good at it, you thought like, oh, you got to go on with it. Yeah. Otherwise, you no, no, no. I had a passion for it. Oh yeah. I had a love for it. I had a goal. I had a goal for it, but I, I just knew one day I was going to go to boxing. I just didn't know when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we'll get into that as we go along, along with the story. Yeah. The reasons why and yeah, the circumstances yeah. why and when. You know well, when I mean? you made your decision, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so like, how was footy going for you, bro? Like, I was, man, I was a beast. Like, I was, I was, I was like a, just a. When you got picked I for NRL, in, yeah, who's the first team? St George. St George. Yeah, that was your team. Brian right, Smith. Brian Smith was the the um, head coach of Saints of Dragons back then, and um, I was only in the uh, jersey flag, yeah, which was, I think today is 19s, but. Back then it was 18s, mm. and um, he, <clears throat> because it goes back then we used to go to under 21s, reserve grade, first grade. Yeah. So I went and then so flag was below 21s, so I was on the, in the under 18s, and at the end of the season we made the grand final. We lost the grand final to Canberra, I think, and then um, we I got. Picked from that to go straight to reserve grade, mm -hmm. from jump twenty one straight to reserve grade. Really, um, at Campbelltown, in my first um, oh, first yeah? starting game at five eight. I never played five eight in my whole career. Oh no way! What were you playing? Full center, back? center, center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you got when did you get into first grade? I went to reserve grade, played there for a couple of times. I come back, went to play in the, obviously mm. not the Australian school, but I played in the Australian Junior Kangaroos, which is an under nineteen team. Australian Junior Kangaroo played um, Great Britain. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. When yeah. you played Junior Kangaroo, then you're playing other countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played, played confusing played, schoolboys. We played uh, Great Britain. Yeah, under nine on his team. We played them like a, I think it was might have best of three or best of two. I can't remember. We played them once up in um, Parks once before the Australian team and in Parks out. Parks out, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, Parks out out uh, west. Oh, in wet, like I mean, yeah, in West, West, Western New South Wales, yeah, yeah. 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 Played out there, and the Australian team played after us. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we played that, and then I come back, and I was on the sit. I was playing for twenty under twenty ones. Yeah. And then the the last game of ninety three, which was, they were going they were going to the finals, the Dragons. Yeah. But the last game, they were they were probably six six points behind, six seven eight points behind, with about twenty five to go. Mm. And I and I went from twenty ones sitting on the bench for the for the first grade team. Yeah, yeah, that's so, it. Yeah, so then I hear my name get called up, chop, get warm up. <laughs> and I'm like, what? what? It's for now. Yeah. So I <laughs> jumped down, run on the sidelines, done a few warm ups, did a few stretches, a few black fella stretches. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, yeah, went out there and, and debuted. I'm uh, in in Penrith. In they booed. Yeah, ninety three. I, I went on yeah. with twenty five minutes to go try to try to pull it out for us. Oh, they debuted. 
as far yeah, as... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, I thought you said they booed ya. No, no, they... No, yeah, you they debuted. debuted. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. My, yeah, I had yeah, my yeah. first taste of um, the top grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. crazy. Hectic, bro. Yeah. And how long you end up... So you ended up as the highest paid yeah. NRL player. Yeah. How long you play for St. George? How long to that? I was there was? from 93 yeah. to the end of 96. Mm-hmm. So that was three years. But I was a junior all this time. So I went, played in the... In the Harrow Mats, yep. the SG Ball, the Jersey Flag. So I was there for years. Yeah. Until, the, but then the seniors um, from 93 to, to, to 96, we lost the grand final to Manly yep. in 96. And I was like, I, was, I just turned 21. And the final series that oh, I. In 96, you just turned, so you were young that whole time. Yeah, I, yeah. I just turned 21 in 96. Yeah, fuck. So I, we made the grand final. We, had, we didn't have a really, we had a solid team, but not a team that's. Not a team full of internationals like yeah, the, yeah. like Canberra, like yep. Roosters. We did have like because back then it was international. Canberra was like um like Laurie Daly Laurie and Daly, uh, yeah. Stewart is Stewart. Yeah, um, is that J- past Jared Meninga? Croker. That's a bit past nah, Meninga. Meninga was there. Oh, he was but still he, there. Yeah. He, I think he retired in '93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did he end up winning that game? They ended up winning. Yeah, yeah, they ended up winning. yeah. They, went what, up, they made the grand final against Brisbane, but they lost to Brisbane. Yeah. But I sat on the bench for the whole series. And then 94, I started getting more time, more more games. Oh, so he's made the grand final in 93, lost to Brisbane. Yeah. And 96? 96 too. Lost to Manly. Manly. Yeah. But 96, I was, I was the, like, the, I come in my own. And 96, I, I really feel, everyone talks about the 99 final when I had that crazy performance against uh, Cronulla. Yeah. I scored them three tries and we ended up killing them. Um, but... I reckon 96 finals were my best. Oh, yeah? Best, um... Yeah, my... Coming come, come of age and best performances. And what, you end up changing team then? No. Well, what happened? Super League. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super League happened. And they were, cra- they were throwing crazy money. Like, sign-up money was like 100,000. Dead set. Some some 200,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're talking like... Back then, it's like, it's like a million today. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 for um, sure. <clears throat> so... I signed both contracts. I signed. Um, I signed with the Super League, and I signed with an um, an NRL, uh, ARL, which was back then. Yeah. So I signed both contracts, but but I'm, I only took the Super League money, and went with them. Mm. Um, so I went to court all year, fighting that legal sort of battle because I sort of took both offers. You know what I mean? I signed both contracts, and um, luckily the competitions um, come back together at the end of 97 and then I became a free agent again pretty much but who'd you play for in that year uh, Brisbane Broncos oh did ya yeah. yeah fuck I didn't know that we, we won everything oh did you yeah <laughs> who was in that team anyone Al- any other Alfie Langer oh yeah um, what Kevy Walters yeah Gordon Tallis Wendell Saylor Steve Rudolph fuck what a team yeah beast team bro but, but, that's got to be the best team you yeah, played on. That's fair, 100%. <laughs> Shane, Shane Webke. Um, Gordon Taylor, Webke. Andrew G. Like all the old school. Yeah. Um, that's all the state of origin Hancock, legends. Hancock. Michael Hancock. Yep. Has had some beast players, bro. Yeah. Will, Willie Kahn. There's some big big players. That was half the Queensland team. Yeah. It was half the Queensland team. We won everything, bro. We won it. Because back in the Super League, they had like a World Club Challenge. You go to England for three weeks, play to England. Then the English fellas will come out here, play with us for the three weeks. And the competition, we won that. We won, got the, the championship. Um, any trial games, went to Papua New Guinea, played a couple of other teams. We were winning everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it was yeah. such a good year. And, and great bunch of boys, man. Like good, good fellas, you know. Real funny, you, funny. You got along up there? Characters, yeah. 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 Characters. Like I was trying to find my place, you know. Obviously, I wanted to be, you know. It's hard to be the man when you're. I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. It's hard to be the man when you're surrounded by. Because <laughs> I know legends. how you think, bro, and I know how you think. When that's it. I'm the man, bro. When you're surrounded by legends, with you all know? of them, yeah. you're being like, wow, bro. Yeah. So I had to, to sort of bite my time. Yeah. But at the end of the year, when I got told I had to go back to the um, to the ARL, and I become, I pretty much become a free agent. But the competition come back together anyway. And they, and uh, and reporter asked me, you know, where where you want to go? What's going to happen, Chuck? Where are you going to? I said, mate, whoever showed me the, that's when that that movie came out, um, with um, Cuba Gooden Jr. What was it called? 
Um, I know what you're gonna. I don't know the name, but I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. The line out of it yeah, about yeah, show yeah. me the money. Show me, yeah, show me the money. money. Whoever shows me the money, <laughs> that's what I'm going. Yeah. Whoever shows me the money, that's what I'm going. And is it about then? Is it about this time? Is this when you started to become like media wise, mm. really like recognized, really concentrated on? Yeah. Well, I was sort of was from a junior. I was like they were, they were looking out for me. Like yeah. media would. Obviously, I was Tony Mundine's son. I wanted to see what, but I wanted to forge my own name and my own sort of way, you know. And, yeah. And um, so I felt that you know to put it, to do that through you know especially through Lee, it's such such a big vehicle. Mm. Um, in in especially in the in the um, eastern sort of state yeah. coast, um, wanted to really forge my name and become a sort of household name. Yeah. And um. Yeah, so. And who'd you end up playing for then? When when you say, who, who ended up showing you the most money? <laughs> the Dragons. The same, oh, the, the same, oh, the same back things the that, are, that are left. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, hectic. So I got I was on two million for three years back then. Fuck. Late nineties, two million for three years. Yeah. So you gone before a few years before that from thirty grand yeah. to a hundred and twenty, and that was Oki. Yeah. To three million, to so that's six, two, two million. Two million, so that's, that's six sixty a year. Yeah, about six sixty. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. And I want to, I want to, I want to say something that I should. I don't know if I should say it, but in '97 when I signed for the for the Broncos to um, it's it's this year later, so I'll, I'll spin you the yarn. Yeah, go bro. <laughs> <laughs> so when I signed with the Broncos, I signed. You get a sign-on deal mm-hmm. with um with Super League. Mm-hmm. The ARL offered me one fifty, and the Super League offered me a hundred thousand. Sign on, just a, just a sign on. Yep. So I, I signed both contracts. That's why I went to court and whatnot. But I just took the um, Super League money. Mm-hmm. So then I signed with the Broncos. They showed me a three year deal. Um, was three hundred fifty a year, three hundred fifty a year, but I was getting a hundred k in the bag. You know what I mean? So oh, four hundred fifty. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So yeah. it was four fifty a year. Yeah, hectic. So, so, um, I I got the hundred thousand sign on. I got the three fifty that year, and I worked at where the extra extra hundred thousand a year I'd get in the first year. Oh, you so see the extra <laughs> for the three years? Yeah, yeah, yeah hectic. You know so the mean? first year you got the three hundred. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I got three hundred. And then because it sucked after a year. Plus my three fifty. Plus my three fifty. Yeah. Plus the hundred. Yeah. Hectic. So that's seven fifty yeah. for that year. That's crazy. Yeah. That was in ninety seven. <laughs> yeah. But tell me, look, what started turning you off? Obviously, Mate. like, because at this point, a bit after that, you started hating NRL. Yeah, I did. I, I fell out of love with the game. Tell me, but teach me about all the things you faced in there, and bruh, like I was very from a young age, right? I'm talking about like twenty year old, da- daily, who I consider one of the best. Yep. Um, Fitler's one of the best. Um, they were the two main guys, like daily and Fitler, of my sort of generation. Mm. Um, I wanted to go. I was going for the best. So from a young age, when I was 20 years old, this is 20, 20 year old kid. Yeah. I get asked a question by a reporter. His name Denny. You know him. You know Denny Wilder from Channel yep. Nine. He, um, he started. I oh know. I can't remember what he asked me specifically, but it pretty much, you know, pretty much where do you where do you see yourself rank amongst these guys? I said, what do you mean rank? I'm the best. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I'm the best. Like, of course. Um, daily, he's, run, he's running on old legs. That's what I say to everything too. He, he, <laughs> so you got to say that. He's, run, he's running on old legs, yeah. bro. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, and he's, he's only 26, mind ya. And I'm, <laughs> he's and on I'm, older legs. And I'm 20, yeah. He's running on old legs, but I'm the new kid on the block. Yeah. The man's here, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I started, and then my dad rings me the next day when he, when they come out the, on the papers and that. He goes, did you say that? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, I say what, dad? said about Laurie Daly. I said, Dad, <laughs> mate, relax. Oh, mate, he's nothing. I'm the best. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, Dad, retract that statement. Retract <laughs> that comment. I said, Dad, relax, mate. I'm not about that. So I've become a thing. I'm not like you, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm my own man, Dad. Yeah. Like, you know, I was, I, was, I was a 20-year-old man by then. So I was like, Dad, I'm not retracting it. This is, if he wants war, let's go to war. Yeah, let's you know see it. It was a, everyone said from. So, so, so every game we played, Laurie Daly, 
Brad Fittler, and then Brad Fittler, we're playing Brad Fittler, right? But we're playing the Roosters. Yeah. Picture this, if it, it was if it was today, right? Mm. We're playing the Roosters, big game, like raising yeah. you know rivalries with the Roosters, big, yeah, and, and, the, and Canberra. Um, we're playing the Roosters, and they're they're always getting picked in the, in the national teams. Mm. You know what I mean? Above, uh, include in front of me. So I was like, I ought to go, I ought to go this bloke, I ought to go him. I, so I come out in the paper, headlines, back back page news. Why pick him, I'll whip him. Yo. <laughs> Why pick him, I'll whip him. Let's, well, let's go. You want to go? Let's go. Yo. You know what I mean? And then we had the 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 media sort of thing at the SF, the new stadium now, um, Sydney Football Stadium. Yo. But it's, I don't know what it's called now. I think it's Allianz. Allianz, 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 Allianz Stadium. Yeah. We had the, um, in down the, um, what, the uh, when you run out. Yo. Um, we had tunnels, yeah. tunnel. We had we had. The, we weren't, weren't saying nothing. And I was, we were like two prime like gorillas, you know. Yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I was sitting there like we knew it was on. And oh yeah, yeah, we knew it was on. Like he looked at you. No, nah, we just knew it was on. Yeah. He didn't say nothing to me. I didn't say nothing to him, but we knew it was on. Yeah. Like when we get on when we get on the field, and you know you know in the, in a game right, like a, a, a five eight or a half will stand on the, on on back. On the sides, and the fullback will be in the middle, mm-hmm. and normally the, the team keep on the sides. So if they catch the ball, and I'm on the same side of the side as them, they catch it, and you know normally they catch it pass through the front rower, yep. bring it back. So I'll catch it if I'm on the same side. I like catch it, I just run, run straight, straight at, at you. <laughs> try, try, try to intimidate me. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. But but I was I was just hitting the hard again. That's all, brother. I'm here all day, brother. Yeah, I just yeah. talk shit like you know. <laughs> I'm here all day, brother. You can't beat me, guys. You know. Yeah. I just get in their heads, and. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm a Muslim, but alhamdulillah. They never beat me, not one game. Not, oh, never, no way. Never outplayed me. Never. So since these rivalries, since they never five beat, years, five, yeah. six, six, we're talking six years. Canberra two? Not one game. Canberra two. No way. Not one game, not two games. Not, we're talking years. We're and talking big superstars 10, too. <laughs> we're talking 10, 15 games and final series. Yeah. Hectic. I pumped them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why when I, when I step into a room, and they're there, they know. They gotta put their head down. <laughs> the, the Mac is here, bro. The man is here, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, you left them undefeated, brother. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what 100%. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, so what happened then? I'll tell you the story how I left rugby league, how mm. I, I knew that I was going. Mm. In 99, they were, um, they, they took a tour to, to England, 42 man squad. Not, not one team, not two teams, not pretty, pretty much three teams. Yeah, three teams. You know what I mean? Mm. And I was the best player in the world. Statistically, mm-hmm. line breaks, tries assist, yep. tries, tries. As a 5'8", I was scoring... You were nine, actually killing it. As a 5'8", I, yeah. I was scoring yeah. 19 tries a year, 17, 18, 19 tries yeah. a year. That's unheard of. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... I was the best by Even far. just being at the top paid, bro, in itself says something. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then um, I didn't even I didn't even pick on that tour. After, Out of three after, teams. After the grand final, we lost to Melbourne. They were, they were taking the, the tour um, um, six, yeah. two, three weeks, four weeks later, and I didn't get picked. And I was I was devastated, bro. Dev devoted life. This wait, wait. Was, in that in grand final, you, that's the one you lost to Melbourne. Yeah. So you're after, doing all, after the grand final. After the but so after you, that whole season. Yeah. So you're killing man. it all season. All season. I was a man. I was a man. I wasn't killing. I was, <clears throat> Even a, I was, a I grand was, final player. I was. I was. I was number one. Yeah. Daylight was second. Yeah. Daylight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I knew what I was playing at. Like no one, and I didn't get picked in the two. I was. So what'd you make of that? Then I was going to retire. Then I was. I was definitely going to um, call it. Call it. Call it quits then. Yeah. But then I then I thought about it. I said, Nah, I want to give it one more crack. Like I want to train hard in the off season. Mm-hmm. I want to do it all I can to get back to what I, how I was this year and kill it again. Mm. So then we then it starts again. Yeah. So 2000 season starts. I, I start ripping up again. Mm. We're about seven eight games in before the Anzac Test. But I'm not the Anzac Test. Before the Anzac Test, mm-hmm. and we play the Roosters. We play the first game. Uh, Newcastle in Newcastle, Canberra at the SFS at the Allianz, mm-hmm. and um, the Roosters down at Wind Stadium. Yep. Kill, kill, I kill him in Canberra. Wind Stadium. I, I kill him in. Yeah, we'll go. Yep. I kill him in um, Newcastle. 
I killed, I killed that score a mad individual try against Canberra, and we win. Yeah. Um, and we play Roosters at win. Um, we're bo- we're down by ten. I get I get hurt. I get off go off the field. Get a fucking jab. Yeah. I'm, I'm back on. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We got to pull out. We score. We score. We got. We're down by. But down by. Down by four now. I I scored the last try. I, I scored the last try. Um. To win the game, pretty much, yeah. And we beat Roosters by two. Heck that was the closest way they. That's the closest time they got to beating us. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I pulled it out and yeah. won it. It's a perfect start. So everyone thought it was me. Everyone, it's your time, bro. To show them, you know. Mm. It's your time to shine. Blah blah blah. The Anzac for what test? Anzac test. The, that's early in October, April. And who's that? Uh, New Zealand. New Zealand. Yep, yep, yep. New Zealand. And um, so I read, read out the team. I'm by myself because yep. I just want to want to zen out and just you know focus on you know being, having that moment to myself. You mm-hmm. know, and um, they read the, they read the team out, and I didn't get picked again. And I was like, "What the fuck? Are you serious?" Like, so what'd you make of that, mate? I was just I was like, "Fuck this!" Pretty much. Fuck. You started asking questions. Nah, did you get replies? I. I reckon I, deep down I know why they 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 didn't because I, they couldn't control me number one. Yeah. And I was a proud young Aboriginal Muslim mm. with a, with a, with a big mouth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they wanted to, they just wanted to show me their power. Yeah. Their power to say you we'll let you through when we when we when we're ready. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Not not on your time, on our time. Yeah. So I was like. Fuck this! You know what? I said to my good mate at the time, uh, Coda Nasser, who became my mm-hmm. manager, and and I said, "Bro, give me a flight to um to the states. I want to go back to. I want to go. I want to get out of here. Get yeah. out of here. This is like after the early, you know, after the first seven, eight games of the season. I said, "Listen, I'm out of here, bro. I'm not. I need you to fucking take." What the did he say? Did he say, he goes, "All right, let's go"? No, or no, nah, nah, stick yeah, it out. Are you serious? Relax. What, what are you talking about? I said, "Bro, I don't want to play. No, I'm not playing anymore. No yeah. I don't. Like, I'm not spitting a dummy, but fuck, this is this is ridiculous. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna give these guys, you know, yeah, my 100. my personality, my charisma, my my flamboyancy. Why should I? Why should I? Benefit from that, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. I'm not getting, I'm not getting no rewards. Yeah, Yo, you feel I'm, like it's going I'm, nowhere. I'm telling nowhere, fuck bro. Em. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. fuck, I'm, I'm out of here. Let me just get out of here. Take, take a balcony view mm. where you, where you look outside yourself and looking at, look, looking down on what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So I went back to, I went to San Jose. In um, San oh, Jose. so you said relax, st- but you f- fuck this. You went anyway. I went. <laughs> yeah, 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 I went. I said fuck this. Yeah. When I when I want something, I do it. I do it. Well, yeah. So what's so a halfway through the season? You no, just not even halfway through the first sort of ten games. You just stepped. I said, see later. What did you say, like DJ? I didn't say nothing. Nothing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even. T- so stand, you just didn't stand, come brother, to. <laughs> brother, stand. I didn't even tell my mother. No way. I swear to God. So next training session, no one you knew. didn't rock up. What? No, no one. <laughs> When I didn't rock up and the, yeah. and the media found out, it was, it was a frenzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said I was in Hawaii. They was taking photos of me on the beach in Hawaii. He's drunk. I was with, I was with, I was with, a, I was with, with a Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> I was just making a gig yeah, yeah, yeah. while my mates are training. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they couldn't find me. Yeah. So I went back to um, I went to America. And um, I, when I, I was I was a young basketball player back in the yeah. day when I was young. Bro. Yeah, bro. So they, I know this. We'll talk about. I went to Glebe High. We said this before. When I went to Glebe High, <laughs> there was like I can't remember who, bro. There's like a PE coach or someone was saying like, you know, Anthony Mundine went to this school, and you know he's a gun basketball player, like played for state. And so I knew that from that, but but no one knows that, yeah. bro. So I was well when I was growing up, basketball I loved it, mm-hmm. but p- football was my passion. Yeah. So I was. So if I wasn't playing yeah, like, footy, Sydney, yeah. if I wasn't playing footy, I was playing basketball. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and vice versa. But so, bro, what happened in San Jose? You, you so you're on the run Sa- from the news. I went to San Jose and the whole NRL. <laughs> um, so, story back to the story. When I was 15, I, I toured the West Coast doing basketball. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah hectic. I toured the West Coast with, a, with the, some sort of rep team. Yep, yep. And we played in, in all different high schools. And this one particular at uh, San Jose. Family, um, the Filipino family, they built, we got billeted it out yep. to families, to, to people to have you over for the night. 
So when Does he still do that? Is that nah, still a thing? I, I don't think so. I, I got billeted uh, once. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so, so. <laughs> Not in this day and age, eh, bro? <laughs> hey, hey, back in our days. Hey, bros. But we, um, so we stayed in contact yeah. with this Filipino family. So oh, yeah, over I, there, when, yeah. I, when I want to come back from 15 till I was 21, we we'll stayed in contact every now and then. I was yeah, um, staying in contact with them. And then I went back to see them um, when I wanted to have that spell mm. from footy and think about what I, what, what I want to do next. And... Um, but in the back of my mind, I knew, I think this is the time. This is the time for me to, to turn pro and shock, shock them all uh, for, as far as boxing. Yeah. And um, so I went over there. I actually played a gridiron game over there. I killed it too. Oh, no yeah, way. Yeah, I killed it. I killed <laughs> it, bro. And um, they had like a tournament. And it's mad sport, gridiron yeah, it's too, freaky, eh? It's freaky sport. It's freaky, eh? Um, so I scored a touch, couple of touchdowns. And um, <laughs> anyway, I, I come back. And I went... And, my, my ticket went via Vancouver because I've never been to Canada. So yep. I wanted to go to Canada. I wanted to check it out. Mm. So I went to Canada, sussed it out. Went Vancouver went up, went up to Whistler Mountain and that for a couple of days and come back. And then come back and it was just um, it was like Michael Jackson arrived in Australia. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. yeah, it was crazy, bro. It was like, Fuck. They knew you were coming? Yeah, well, they, by then they knew what, I, they yeah, found yeah. me and I knew I was coming. No way! And then I had to face, I had to face the music as far as were with, they in the airport? With yeah, <laughs> that with, would have been with, with the club, yeah. um, with my coach. So got off the plane, faced all the media. Um, I didn't say anything. I just got in the car and jetted. Yeah, I went straight to see the the um, CEO of the so Dragons. Dragons, Dragons, Dragons. Yep. Told him he had, he was tearing up. Yeah, went and told my coach. He was tearing up. I oh, like telling him you're off. That's yeah. it. Yeah, tell him that, you know I'm telling him that's it. I want to retire. And they they said then they called the, the 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 members of the board and organised a meeting for that evening mm. at about five six o'clock. Went to the club, um, told them what I want to do, and they said, not a problem. We support you and your decision. But if you ever come back, if you ever do come back, because they thought it was going to be a part-time gig. Yeah. If you ever do come back, for whatever reason, you can't sign with no one else but St. George. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, they thought you'd just spinning out. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. sweet. I'll, I'll sign that. So yeah. I signed it. And um, well, can I ask you, what, what did your dad say when you said, I'm, I'm quitting footy? Oh, he, he shit himself. He's, yeah. like, he's like, what are you talking about? Like, you're making making big money, mate. Like, yeah. And he, this is what he said. He said, boxing's dead in this country. Boxing, oh, really? He boxing's said that. dead. Like, boxing's yeah. dead. There's no one. Boxing's dead. I said, you like know what? I told I said, your brother, it's a long shot. Yeah. You've got footy now. Yeah. Don't be dumb. The yeah. boxing's a long shot. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that, that's not smart. Yeah. That's dumb. <laughs> yeah, well, true, true, you know what bro. Mean? Yeah, and you got to believe then, a and lot. He, and I, my reply to him was, don't worry. I'm going to give boxing mouth to mouth. Yeah. Because I knew what it. sort of personality I was. Mm -hmm. I knew what sort of um, mouthpiece I was mm -hmm. and entertainer I was. And it fits in with boxing and, and, well. And what I did with my football career and how controversial and, you know, with that, that just, I was pretty much a super, I, I'm, yep. my first fight that I fought against Gerard Zos at the entertainment centre, mm -hmm. I earned what I earned, what I made with the Dragons that first in the year. Your first fight. My first fight, I made 600k in a year for that fight. But before we get into the boxing, when did Islam become part of your life? That would have been... Like who introduced you to that? 90, 96, I would have got introduced to it. Is that by Koda? Koda, yeah, Koda. Yeah. You know, slowly but surely, he was, he was introduced, like, introducing me to Islam. And I, I was very sceptical. Mm -hmm. Um, at the start, because you know I had my own sort of beliefs, and you know I had my um, you know Aboriginality side of things. Yeah. So I said, all right, let me delve into what we was taught as children, uh, what we were brought up on. We mm. wasn't really religious, but yeah, yeah. You know, I knew that I, I'm not. I, you know, from the signs are all around us that there was, there's there's had to be a designer yeah, or yeah. creator to create this such a complex sort of system we have yeah. in life in the world you know 
um, in the universe. So. But you never grew up um, like religious. No, nah, not really. Were you, like, were you one of like one of the families that are just loosely, presumptively Christian because you grow up in a Christian, yeah, yeah, like pretty, that, pretty like that. So, so, sort of how I grew up. It's like, like you ask, it's like, oh, I think I'm Christian. Yeah, like, sort like, of like that, that, like yeah. that. I was like that. You know what I mean? So, so um, yeah, as I got started to with Toda, um, started to get close with Toda. You know, I started asking some questions here and there about Islam. Um, and then I wanted to learn the fundamentals of it. Then I, was, I wanted to learn my religion, what our faiths and beliefs are yeah. with um, Christianity. And Church of England was the, the yeah. sect that um, we were brought up on, Church of England. And um, I started to delve into that, to Christianity. My uncle, my uncle and us, the pop, my uncle was a pastor. I asked him a lot of questions. So I, then, I, then from there, I started delving that. I sort of, no, no, that's not, that's, that's, I can't sort of, delve in with that so i went to aboriginality i went to my old uncles and up in up north up in bunjalung country yep and they were like balana nah, up, up uh tablam tablam yep. Mm. Yep. tablam uncle harry monday and that uncle harry walker and then um started having yarn with them and that it, it, culturally our, our people we believed in the, in the oneness of monogamy, monogamy of god the oneness of god with the one power, the one supreme yeah. sort of being, and and um, you know basically take care of the, the earth. Aborig Aboriginal culture, you know, women have their roles, men have their roles, but mm -hmm. everything is equal. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's pretty complex, but once you get to know it, it's pretty much identical. Found a lot of similarities. Uh, yeah. Identical to identical, Islam. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. That's what really get brought me over the line with that. And um, when I learned about this, um. Islam and their, the fundamentals of Islam, the share la la illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, like believing in the one God, mm -hmm. with no no one, no one else, and no one else, and and Muhammad's the final Messiah, and you know this the charity is one of the pillars, um, Ramadan, um, that really um, sort of hit home with me. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? and I, and I started to delve in more and more and more, and everything that I wanted wanted answered for, answers for. You were doing this at at this point for yourself, for myself, on your own journey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my journey, yeah, for myself, and everything I wanted answers for, yeah, um, was answered, yeah, um, through to the Quran, and um, yeah, I think in ninety ninety nine maybe ninety nine, mm -hmm. but I was introduced in ninety six, but ninety nine I think I took my shahada, which is just bear witnessing. That there's only one one God and Muhammad's the final Messiah. That's mm. it. So it took you a good three years. Three years, yeah. I had, <coughs> I had, That's good. I that had, says a lot. Had to do a bit of research, mm. and I'm not going to just delve in. Yeah. You know, to something that. Oh, a lot of people will. Yeah. But some, it's, some yeah, do, yeah, yeah. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's hectic, brother Mad. And so then, let's get into the boxing, brother. You become pro. I become pro. Yeah. What My, did you fought Mady at the entertainment center. What was his name? Uh, Is that what you said? Gerard Zos. Gerard Zos. Who was he? He was a listen. I was a I was a ki I was a, a a rugby league player, and this was supposed to be my part time gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In boxing, I fight a guy. Were people thinking it's like this is joke around stuff? Yeah, but this I, is I, going I fought a professional. You fought a full pro. 20, so you're not yeah, doing like Gallon, yeah, not to say nothing against no, Gallon, no. but you're not fighting basketball players and no, stuff. You're no. fighting. <laughs> you're fighting. <laughs> a, <laughs> I'm fighting a real. You're dude. fighting a, a proper boxer. So he yeah. was. He had twenty fights, ten wins. Ten losses. Yep. He had, but he had years of experience. Mm. Ten wins, ten losses. He'll knock out nearly anyone. You know what, <laughs> you I, mean? Know what I mean? So, yeah. so <laughs> he was my first fight. Yeah. And you know, through my talent, through my ability, and through my hard work and and dedication, you know, I stopped him in the four four rounds. Yeah. And then the, the TKO. Rest, but um, TKO, yeah, TKO. TKO. Yeah. And then, and then from there, bro, like everyone, like. Because Jeff Fennick and his whole crew, yeah. um, Dan Nader Hamden, mm. Ian McLeod, um, after my first fight, it was massive, um, it was massive exposure, massive night, uh, big entertainment. Anyway, I do a Fox Sports interview. This one, I first sort of hit the scene, Fox Sports and that. Um, I'm at this, um, down Darling Harbour at this, I think, sports bar or something. Yeah. Next minute, next minute, five about ten blokes rock walking through the crowd. They, they ambushed my 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 interview. No, 
Team Fennec and these, all these boys, all these cronies. No way. Swear to God. You can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? What do you come in? Started um, talking shit. Started, mate, you, you, you haven't fought no one. You fight one of my guys. I said, mate, I just had one fight. First fight. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 that's what I even know who I am. That's, that's what I'm, one fight, bro. That's what I'm yeah. saying, bro. You know what I mean? I just come to the I just come to the game, yeah. flip the switch, and we on now. Yo. You know what I mean? You should be happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? They come in here hating and trying to get your fighters to fight me. Yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm new to this game. Like, yeah. It's my first fight. Give me give me a chance. I said, well, just get, let me have a few fights, then I'll fight one of your fighters, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And he goes, all right, then I'll, I'll hold you to that. Yeah. So guess what? My fourth fight. I fight Ian McLeod. He's top 15 rated fighter in the world um, at junior middleweight. He, you know, he had to come up to me, which I was super middleweight, yep. a couple, couple of things. But I wasn't asked for the fight. They, mm. were, they were coming for me. So I was like, well, bring him on. Let's go now. Well, that's one of his mates. That's, no, one of his, one of his, um, one of his fighters. Fighters, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we, we fight in Wollongong. Yep. I said I'm gonna bury this. Like when I I had that mental mentality of an eye of the tiger. Yeah. I had I was I was like Rocky. You know what I mean? I was like um, against um, Club and Lang. Yeah. You know what I mean? That rematch against Club and Lang. I had that eye of the tiger. I wanted to kill him. You know what I mean? And um, I I I, I batted him from pillar to post, and I stopped him in round nine. Yeah, yeah man. In my fourth fight. Yeah. Fourth. And he's top fifteen. Top fifteen in the world. But that is set a fire in you when they done that. Bro, they, when they come and ambush you like that, ambush you'd have been burning. Check it out, bro. Yeah. Check it out. I'm telling you, I was. <laughs> you would have went away for months. But, fuck these idiots. Like, that's what I mean. Like, fuck these guys. <laughs> fuck these yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm the new kid on the block. I'm the I'm the dog, top dog now. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's, you want to get it on? Let's go then. You know? I was like. Yeah. And by saying that, even in the first fight, what did you say? You had you got more money from that first fight. Yeah. Then. The whole year, did you say? Uh, same, 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 same. Oh, the same, yeah, yeah. Same amount of money than what I did for St. George, which is about six fifty, seven hundred a year. Wow, in fight. your first fight. That was, that was the, that's what I generated as far as, you know. How does that go, right? bro? Like, how does that go? Is it, does it go like, it's not a set agreement. Like, I've got no knowledge in this. This is like standard to you. It's not a set agreement on what you'll get. It's how nah. much sells or yeah, something? Yeah, but some sells. Like sell, ticket, ticket, ticket sales um, and pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's bundles, Buzz. Pay-per-view and ticket sales. So you I've would have been spinning then on the money. I've earned, you know, this is a black fella from yeah. urban Sydney, yeah. Canterbury, about 35 million in my, in my career. Fuck me dead. Yeah. But I felt like, honestly, I felt rude to like ask. You know, when we're talking the rugby league money, 100K, this yeah. and that, but like, bro, I knew, I know for a fact yeah. that you fight, you earn millions, bro. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. I earn about, yeah, about, about 30, 35, 35 million. million for my career. How many fights you end? So, bro, like, when's your first title? When first was that? First title was 203. And that was only, that was only, it's three, only a couple years in. Three years in. Three years in. Three years in. My first world title yep. was one, one and a half years in. Oh yeah, yeah. Sven Otki in Germany. Sven when, Otki. when everyone was jumping on tables, because what happened? Remember this, the September 11? Yep. And I made that statement. Not really. Well, anyway, I made. I'm sure, it would have been all over the news. It was, it was <laughs> all over the news. It was. They ran me out of the country. Pretty was much. Was it something along the lines of what do you expect or some something that, like yeah, that? Yeah, it was like um, I said. Um, basically, America had him had, had it coming to him. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Because, yeah, had it, yeah, yeah, because remember. they're in everyone's fucking backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're down there fighting everyone. Yeah. What's going to happen? Someone's going to attack Someone's you. Someone's going to rebuttal. You swing you know punches. I mean? You're going to get jabbed. Yeah. Anyway, the media, the um, they just turned the narrative to to make out like I was for the killings. Yep. I was for, you know, pretty much I was happy for this shit. But yep. like what? I didn't like. I didn't. I didn't mean it like that. But mm. because they they can portray that whatever however they want, um, however they want to, they can. So they turn pretty much everyone against against you. You know yeah. how the media can yeah, manipulate and whatnot. So I had all this pressure on me, and then I had to, I had to do this interview with um. I think it was with John Laws or somebody. And I was saying, mate, I'm not for the killings, like. Where am I saying, like taking one, in, in Islam, taking one human life is like taking the whole of humanity. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? That's how important a human life is. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't want no one to die. I don't care if you're black, white, Christian, mm-hmm. Buddha, um, whatever. Buddha, bro. Buddha. I don't care if you're black, I'm white, a, I'm Buddha. A, I'm a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get a Buddhist. <laughs> Buddhist. <laughs> I can't help it. I was a man one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be laughing. I shouldn't man. have said nothing. I'm watching the back, Buddha. Fucking hell. Yeah, Buddhist yeah, or whatever, yeah, you know Buddhist, what I mean? Yeah. So I don't care what you are. Yep. Like taking one human life is like taking the rest of you. Yeah, yeah. And like, I was on four of the killings. I was just explaining politi- politically. That why they they're in other people's yards and trying to take their shit. Mm. There's gonna you know there's gonna be repercussions. I get exactly what you're saying. They right. conduct ways of war. Yeah, and an act of war happened and back they, to and them. And they make it's it. And procedure. they make it's not there out there. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's not. There. That's all you were saying. Yeah, that's all yeah, I was saying. Yeah, they're fighting. You, that's all I was saying. Fight you. That's all yeah, I was saying. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? I get 100. And and they were made. I was full of kills, whatever. So I I end up I was fighting Oki three yeah. a month later. In Germany, mm. so I said, "I'm out of. I got all this pressure. I'm all the media's all over me. I was like, I'm out of here, bro. Yeah. I, I left early. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I went like, three, three weeks early. Yeah. <sighs> Biggest regret of my life. My dad said, "Listen, you got to spar. Do do sparring. You got to run. We had no sparring partners. Yeah. I didn't take any sparring partners. Yeah. So I didn't want them to know my, you know, my my speed. Yeah. I didn't know about my, you know, what what I got. Yeah. So I said, No, I don't want. I'm not going to spar." So I just trained oh, hard. Oh, because they watch her. Yeah. Yeah. I trained hard. I trained hard, but I didn't spar. And I didn't do none of my, my road runs. I had all this innovative, new... Um, trainer methods. Tra- training methods. Yeah. thought I was fucking a doy. I had this trainer. <laughs> yeah. I was a doy, bro. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I, I win the fight. And I win, have the fight with Todki. Yeah. He's one of the most capped sort of fighters in... German history. He's German. Yep, yep. World champion. IBF world champion. Yep. He had 22 fights. Listen to this. 22 fights. 12 of them were title defences. So he yeah. won the title after 10 fights. Yeah. How did he do that? He had 300, 300 career pedigree in the amateurs. Went to yep. two two or three world, uh, three or three Olympians. Yeah. Olympics. Fuck. So he's animal. So he's animal. He's animal, yeah. Animal. So I, I was just, I wasn't out of my depth yep. as far as talent. Yeah, but I was out of my depth as far as experience and yeah. seasoning. Yeah, you know what I mean. And um, we did that, and uh, I was be- I was winning the fight. I was winning the fight. I was fucking. I was leading on all 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 scorecards. Yeah. But by the sixth, seventh round, I started to get a bit winded. Yeah. Because I wasn't used to that pace, like a world world class world title yeah, pace yeah, yeah. for all, for twelve rounds. I wasn't yeah. used to it. So round, he got me in a mad shot with round nine. I yep. dropped him too, round eight. Yep. But they, they didn't, they didn't really a little knockdown. But oh, I dropped didn't him. They? Yeah, yeah. And then he admits it later. Mm. I'll tell you about it in this interview. And I dropped him round eight. And then he got me in a mad shot in round nine. Didn't, didn't stun me, but it didn't. And then round ten, he got me right because I was fighting more on instinct. Yep. He got me right in the temple in round ten. I knocked me out cold as yep. a maggot. I was yep. cold as a maggot. Um, and I. And you know, obviously I was down, I was out for about a minute or so. Yeah. And wake up, I was fucking, I was, I was spewing, bro. I was just, yeah, I just, just dip, I was disappointed, man. I yeah. just couldn't believe it. Pretty much, I couldn't believe. It. I thought, you know, I thought it was my destiny. Yeah. yeah I worked yeah. so hard, but but then you know, I just, I just started thinking, and thinking, and think, and and the, and the flight over, we had we had to go through. I don't know for some reason the travel agent we had we booked. It was probably them, but we, we had to go to fly to Greece, Macedonia. Oh, that's it. Like all Not around everywhere. to go, to go <laughs> get back home. It took yeah, about yeah. two days to get back home, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I had a time to think, and I was thinking, what do I say when I go home? But they're going to be like, and they had people, you know, in the news and that, dancing on tables at the St. George League Club with my, my old team because the, because the media put the people against me because of what I said with about 9-11. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, full fucking 
Gronk. Full, full. Just full height. Full and height, me, yeah. High, height and hard, bro. Hard. Fucking hard, hell. bro. They're full dancing because yeah, you dance, lost to. Because I lost. Maybe on the other side of the world. Because I got knocked out, yeah. Fucking hell, bro. Yeah. That would have been disheartening, bro. That Is that disheartening? It's like a lot of getting used to shit. It was, like a dis- that, it was disheartening, but at the same time, that that a lot of that drove me. That, like, that it was fuel to my fire. Like hectic. Yeah, you know I mean, I was like, "Fuck this!" I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna come back and win the championship. So when I got back off the plane, and the bloke was like, "What are you gonna do now? What's next?" Yep. I thought I was gonna come back footy or something. Oh, I thought that's it. Yeah. You had a loss. You're yeah. quitting. Yeah. <laughs> I said, "Bah, what are you talking about? It's a lucky Stop. shot, mate. Yeah. Relax. I'll be back." Yeah. yeah. And then the journey began again. How'd you end up? So what happened with with Green, bros? Is that is that stuff that's all that, real? That's real, bro. That's real. It was real. It Tell was us, dead step real. Um, yeah, pure well, Green, hatred there, bro. <laughs> Green was in the in the in the Fennec camp. Yeah, and he he reckons that I said come out and said or try to belittle him or talk shit about him. But I wouldn't do that to a young yeah. kid coming through. You know what I mean? All these cats that was coming through when I come through and hit the scene, they, they were eyeing me because I was the biggest fish. Mm. You know what I mean? I was the biggest payday yeah. and whatnot. But Green, he's what, what did he have going for him? Yeah, he was a great white hype. Yeah. You know, he was a, he was a white boy. Yeah. You know, blue-collared white boy that come from Perth. He had that Caucasian blood and somebody that represents the system. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and we haven't spoken, like, up until this point, but obviously... <clears throat> underlying but a lot of that stuff that you said would be race yeah for a lot of those people bro yeah especially like that not to geographically nah, put it but the further west you go and then you know what i mean like nah, listen listen that's the only reason that fight was so big it was still the biggest pay-per-view per capita we're yep. talking per capita in the world oh dead set in the world yep. per capita yep as far as population and whatnot. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and and he um, because of race. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that was the unspoken I, drive for it, eh? My whole career, even my, even in my footy, yep. I was against the system. Any injustice, any oppression, mm-hmm. anything for uh, for um, on my people, I'd fight that shit to yeah. to, to, to the brink. You know what I mean? And so the, the system and the media, the media, the mainstream hated me for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why they they, 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 they could portray me of what the line, line 11 thing and turn around, make me out I'm the bad guy. Mm. You know what I mean? Not just the system and the media would have hated you for it, but a lot of the people. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, well, a lot of the people, you, bro. Mate, a lot people, it's about education. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you've got to think about it like a lot of these people we have today you know learn from their fathers mothers grandfathers grandmothers especially out in the bush in the country and that yeah and it's in it's embedded into their psychic racism mm. you know what I mean? like you're not taught to be racist mm. as a kid you can put a three three year old black and white together and they fucking play like yeah everything's beautiful you know what i mean mm. but as you, as you get older and you you get, you, you, you start to be conditioned yeah. to think a certain way um, overhearing things are, and, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and and you know being around that sort of um mindset as far as growing up then that's when things go wrong yeah, 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 yeah. and he was a great white hype and i was a i was in i was the i was the crew they wanted to kill yeah yeah you know yeah I mean? and what happened in the fights buzz the uh, hatred was real between you and him? Yeah, the hatred was real. Because well, obviously some people say, like, you know when fighters do nah, it, it a lot real, of time it's it gammon, real, you know, well, it's a show. I, I, I never liked, because Fennec had, um, you know, had like, was very, very envious of, of yeah. me and what I was doing. I was like, if it's fuck, I mean, it was like, fuck me, I was like, fuck you, pretty much, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, There's a shame that he's like that. I know. There's a like, shame, bro. I know, that's what I was, tell, I was telling him, bro. Like when when we when when I see him now, we're cool. Like he'll yeah. talk to me like sweet, but deep down I know where, where his heart's at. Yeah, you know what I mean you can't. The the heart will never lie, bro. You know, yeah. what I mean? like, it's sad, but you know what do you do? Mm. You know what I mean, I just I just do me, man. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Worry about that, but 
So you end up beating him? I beat him. Yep. I mean, unanimous, unanimous points. I, I, I probably should have start, stopped him late. I should have. Yeah. If I would have put the pedal to the metal, but I didn't want to, because he was dangerous. Yeah. Big puncher. And if oh, I he's a big puncher? Yeah, if I would have got caught with something, yeah. I might have got, um, got hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even like time gone past, you can respect him as a fighter? Yeah, like He's a yeah, mad yeah. fighter? Yeah. 100%. He's a good fighter. Yeah, great fighter. Yeah, yeah. He's a great fighter. Like, yeah. you know, to what he done, he... um. Just, just to show what you can do with with sheer hard work and yeah. hard work and dedication. Yeah, it's a credit to him, man. Because he, he wasn't the most talented. Yeah, but he had he had things going for him that yeah. um, he had that mindset, which yeah. is which is great. And they're both very important things, bro. Talent and that sh- hard work, buzz. Yeah, I know. Like, not that I'm like some technical boxing analyst. I don't really know jack shit. But I know a lot of people say that about um, Costa Zoo. They say they not not like the greatest natural talent, but the hardest worker made yeah. him an animal. You know what yeah, I mean? Hard worker. Yeah. And what about the second fight? Yeah, second one was um probably probably five five eight seven years too late, but um still a good fight. Yeah. Um, the still the rivalry was there mm. and the hatred. The, he wanted to get the the get back, I suppose. But um, I just feel you know anyone that that seen that fight or, or watched that fight, mm. you know, even his fans were telling me I got robbed that night. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And there was all of the pay, back page, you know, the robbery, yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But... It went, so it went the whole way again? A uh, whole way again. Yeah. He got the decision this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But majority. Yeah. Which, um, I thought... I thought. How I old were you by the second fight? Late 30s. Late 30s. Doesn't even count, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't even count, bro. <laughs> True. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that doesn't even count, lad. <laughs> Forget the second fight, brother. <laughs> what are you up to now, brother? You got sports brand boxer? Yeah, I, I just haven't. It really... says here, bro, you're saying you, you run cafes, really, you're a bit nah, of a businessman. I try to, I try to, yeah. Well, I learned from my dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because my dad, everyone thought that we had, like, was spoon fed, you mm. know what I mean? Because my dad and his success and what he done. But people don't know, my dad, all he ended up with was the house yep. in Elwood mm. that he bought for his mother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, Blackfellas, bro, they just spend and give and yeah, give, yeah, yeah. give. I mean, I gave a lot of money too. I don't think you'd be wrong. I'd done some dumb shit mm. when I was young, buying cars, BMWs yeah, and this yeah, and yeah. that. You know, I lived that lavish life. Yeah. Right? Um, but when my dad um, he showed me that because back in them days when he was fighting he was making like his big payday was like 100,000 U- US yeah back in the 70s so we're talking big money and that like, is big like money 10, bro, yeah. like, that's like 10 million like. yeah yeah um, houses in Newtown were like 12, 12 15,000 well there you go you know what I mean <laughs> now they're so, like 2.5 so he, he kept telling me he kept telling me like if I would have just bought property, bought yep. property. So I started buy- when I started making money, I started buying property and property and property, you know, brick and yep. mortar. And I, yep. you know, so I got got like five houses. No and, way. And I and that you all bought what fifteen years ago? Yeah, ten years ago. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, and I got a couple of boarding houses. And you got your brand, your boxing brand, bro. Yeah, boxer. boxer. Yeah, boxer, boxers. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna try and hopefully push it a bit more. What do you sell? Um, just all like just all pads. A bit, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of boxing stuff like pads, yep. gloves. Yeah, hectic, bro. Fuck a knife. And then I got my my uh, my sister's in the disability space. Mm-hmm. Um, she's in the um, we started a new indigenous sort of company called Miban. It's called it means eagle in, yep. in Banjalang. My uncle gave me the name because it's, it's swords, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's a deadly sort of weapon. So we want to try and. It's, it's, it's for the people, I mean, by the people, for the people, to give a mad service for the dis- in the disability space for our mob. Yeah, it doesn't have to be our mob, but we're focused on our mob, but anybody else. Yeah, it's where's that situation? That's, that's Miban. Yep. I think you can go to Miban.com yep. um, or just look it up online, but um, we got an office in, I've got a couple of offices in the mascot. Yeah, sick. Yeah, so. Yeah, mad, brother. And then I do my mindset, bro. My mindset, mundanemindset.com. Yep. Um, mundanemindset.com is it's basically a journey through my story. It's a workshop. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a journey through my story to to 
show from from my side and my sort of mentality yep. on how I achieved and what I had, what I had to overcome. Um, it's just a powerful message through my story. Yeah, um, to be how to 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 succeed. Yeah, fucking nice. You know what I mean? And that's Monday mindset. So I'm down to Perth. I'm doing one in Perth. What do you do? Talks? Talks. Yeah, hectic. Like, like he- but public talking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mad. And just get from my story, yeah. Yeah, hectic. That'd be sick, brother. Yeah. What a young brother. Legendary story. Thank you, my brother, for coming on. Yeah, Love it. Nah, I really appreciate it, brother. Yeah, man, John, cuz. Beautiful, man. It's what, brother.